Western leaders trying to provoke China, Russia, North Korea or Iran into giving them any excuse to start World War Three. Tell you what, I'll just have one more go. All right, and this time I think I'm going to be able to do it. Me seeing on Instagram my ex-wife has gained 20 pounds and married some other poor loser. <laughs> And this was me when my ex-wife finally told me she wanted a divorce. Oh dear, dear, dear. Never mind. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, sorry for the pathetic dad jokes there at the, int- uh, the beginning. Guys, today I'm going to respond to Jeremy's uh, recent top 10 fragrances for men video. I did a reaction video to this. I was sort of speculating about Jeremy. Sorry, yeah, I was gossiping and using Jeremy's name to get views. Yes, hello, it's YouTube. You've got to do that sometimes. But I do respect Jeremy and the video was popular in terms of views. So just that justifies what I did really, doesn't it? Hello. Um, but we wish Jeremy all the best and respect his amazing contribution to the community, which no doubt will still continue in even more bizarre forms probably okay uh before we do today's video don't forget we've got an amazing offer which is on norton and wilson.com all four fragrances for 380 us dollars incredible uh, value for money if you're in the uk bon viveur is out of stock and therefore you can get the other three for a similarly great deal gravitas ascentia and bon viveur all of them really but these two are fresher ones in the in the range would be amazing choices for springtime norton and wilson.com let's get into it then so jeremy did a video uh in one of these couple of videos that he did recently about men's fragrances he kind of gave each one a category like fresh or sweet fragrance. or whatever mont blanc legend spirit as the best cheap fragrance office for men as the best expensive fragrance wood for greatness as the best wood fragrance portrait of a lady as the best rose fragrance so I'm going to do each choice that he did and then give my alternative. Why not? Why not? It could be fun. Okay. So first of all, Jeremy did Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. And he said that's the number one fresh fragrance for men. Good fragrance. Doesn't excite me massively, but it is nice. I prefer Aqua de Palma, Colonia Ascenza, fantastic citrus aromatic. It's got neroli, it's got bergamot, it's got lemon and citrus stuff in there. A bit of rose, it's, co- it's complex, it's got patchouli in there also and some lovely herbal tones. Beautiful Mediterranean chic, nice performance for me, kind of soapy, clean, fresh, alternative to neroli portofino and that kind of thing. But I think it's like neroli portofino on steroids with a bit more going on. Absolutely love that. My personal maybe favourite fresh fragrance or certainly one of them. Next up, Jeremy chose his favourite sweet fragrance, which he said is Armani Code Absolute for men. I'm not that familiar with that. If I've forgotten it, I've, if I've sprayed it ever, I've forgotten it. I'm going to go Mukalat by Montal. It's a guilty pleasure for me. I don't tend to gravitate towards sweeter fragrances as much as many people do. And but therefore, if I'm going to do it, let's go big. And this one is ridiculously sweet and ra- almost rather vulgar. Uh, big strawberry is a note. S- you know, small strawberries, forget it. Big strawberry. It kind of smells like a child's scented er- erasers, if you remember those in your pencil case as a child, or just a bag of sweeties or something like that. I think um, there's a kind of vanilla undertone. It lasts really well. It's really strong. It's very sweet. It's a bit sickly. It's a bit vulgar. Uh, it's- but it's kind of fun once in a while. Moving on then, Jeremy did his favourite loud fragrance, Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mal, a modern classic. Kind of, they always say it's a clubbing scent. Well, I don't go clubbing, as you can probably guess. Um, and that's not something that, it, it's okay, but it doesn't do it for me. If I wanted to wear something loud, I'd go old school with Vintage Coros from Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, it's incredibly complex note listing, everything but the kitchen sink. It's fresh, it's soapy, it has tons of floral tones, it has honey, and it has animalic tones like musk and civet. So it's rather, some people say pissy, that that's, I don't think it smells pissy. It does smell very masculine in a very old school men's bathroom kind of way. Some, type, some, some people say urinal cakes. I've never eaten a urinal cake or smelled one up close, really, but I, how they know this, I don't know. It's a great fragrance. If I wanted to smell loud, I wear that. I found that the limited number of ladies who ever speak to me quite like it if I ever give them the chance to smell it. So what do you think about that? Next, Jeremy did his favourite cheap fragrance. He selected Mont Blanc Legend Spirit. Um, now, that's not a bad choice at all. Good, good, good. Actually, I've never smelled it. I'm just, I trust Jeremy's taste. I, I've never smelled it. I, I'm, I'm making this up. Okay, I'm going to choose in that place Alvarez Gomez Barbaria from the house of Alvarez Gomez. And this is a wonderful kind of citrus aromatic fragrance. It's got beautiful citrus accords. It has ginger and a few other spices and a lovely undertone of vetiver. It's really, really um, complex. So it's not just citrusy and it has a little bit of depth to it, but it has a nice freshness too. Really, really versatile stuff. You can pick it up for about £30 for a 150ml bottle. Love that one from Alvarez Gomez. Not that many years ago that release. Can't remember when, but it's a really historic Spanish, affordable, generally speaking, fragrance house. Um, 
under the radar cheapy love it office for men was jeremy's uh, pick for his preferred expensive fragrance that's from his own brand fragrance one that is a decent fragrance i'm going to pick roger parfum scandal parom scandal parfum fun parom from roger parfum beautiful citrus aromatic stroke fougere some people compare it to vintage eau sauvage from dior i can see where they're coming from it is crisp it is citrusy it is fresh it has wonderful floral accords and complexity mixed in with lavender and all those typical aromatic fougere gentlemanly kind of tones it is absolutely wonderful uh, it lasts really well it's not too in your face in performance and it's it is expensive over 300 pounds i think for 50 mil in my opinion worth it if, if you've got that kind of money knocking around but you don't need to spend that much to smell great do you remember that Next up, Jeremy selected an Oud fragrance. He went for Oud for Greatness by Initio. Um, I'm not much of an Oud guy, so I'm going to really piss everyone off and just pick Royal Oud. I love this really nice fresh citrus with cedarwood and pink pepper. doesn't really smell of Oud at all, but there might be a little bit in there. There, there probably is. However, it does have the word Oud in it. So that's my personal favourite. If you want something really classy from Creed, but you don't want to smell old-fashioned, as my favourite Bois de Portugal might do, or even maybe Green Irish Tweed does a little bit, this could be the choice for you. Expensive again, but possibly worth it. Royal Oud from Creed. My favourite Oud fragrances. Oud have thought it. Next up, Portrait of a Lady was Jeremy Fragrance's favourite rose fragrance. An interesting category. Glad he included that. Um, I'm going to go for... I like that, actually. That's a really good choice. It's a great fragrance. Frederick Marl, Portrait of a Lady. Fantastic fragrance. I'm going to go Tobacco Rose from Papillon, an English house. The amazing perfumer, Liz Moores. And I think this is one of their first couple of releases. It's been around a few uh, years. Wonderful. Uh, maybe more than one type of rose. I don't know. It's a kind of dark complex rose very sophisticated fragrance and this kind of hay like tobacco accord in there wonderfully perfectly balanced really good prices for niche on this one too a bit more under the radar this house love them papillon tobacco rose perfumer liz moore's great great release that one indeed next up jeremy went for the teenage category and he he chose dylan blue by versace is that cheaply available because i would have thought it wants to be very affordable for a teenager but that's not a bad fragrance it doesn't excite me massively nice freshy but you know doesn't drive me wild with excitement this perhaps doesn't do that and actually very few fragrances do they're only fragrances but i would probably say why doesn't a teenager go for club to Nuit intense man by armaf very affordably available about 25 pounds a bottle 105 mil just the eau de toilette is fine there's different versions and it's their version of Creed's Aventus. In the air, it smells very similar, perhaps performs more strongly. And people really like this one when you wear it in real life. And, and that's what a teenager wants. They want to be popular and they perhaps don't want to spend hundreds of pounds because they ain't got it yet, right? So Club de Nuit Intense Man Armaf would be my pick, maybe, to recommend to a teenager to wear. Uh, next up, he went for a creative fragrance. Ooh, a creative fragrance. What does that mean? Um, he chose Perf Parfums de Mali Latent Exclusive haven't don't remember smelling that it's bad aren't i i'm gonna go andy tower l'air du desert marocaine a fantastic evocation of the air of the moroccan desert it has rock rose it has spices and i think there's some lavender in there i'm not sure if that's listed as a note so it has almost a semi barbershop air i always say but it's got this air of the Moroccan desert kind of skillfully captures the dry air of the Moroccan desert, picking up the spices, maybe the, the, uh, the aura of walking through a market in Morocco or something like that with the air of the desert blowing in in the evening. It's, it's magical. It really is magical. And it's very well priced, I think, I think still, for a niche fragrance. That's Andy Tower or Tower Perfo Perfumes. L'Air du Desert Marocain. Already we're at the end. And Jeremy chose his best longevity fragrance. He chose a category which is new to us all. Longevity fragrance. Okay, he went for Dior Sauvage Elixir. That is my, my favourite of the Dior Sauvage line, which is a good line, but it doesn't excite me so much. A little bit too commonplace. But it, I did like what they did with that to a great extent i don't own a bottle if i want longevity i'm going to go for the nuclear bogart forio it's like koros but more so more gnarly more animalic more masculine and even stronger and you can still buy it in a modern formula today it's really remarkable stuff bit old-fashioned be careful bit old-fashioned smelling don't wear it on a first date bogart forio actually do who cares who cares what they think if they're gonna like you they're going to have to put up with these smells, right? Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe. Or even if not, maybe the next one will be better. It could hardly be any worse. Don't forget, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. And although sometimes life can stink, at least we can always smell good. Bye-bye.